All right, what is going on y'all? Thank you for being here. So in this video, kind of want to help break down the calendar um, the best I understand it because we have the Torah and the Hebrew calendar and we have a creator calendar and we know they're they don't line up. They don't line up just because See when the he when they made the Hebrew calendar, they wanted to make a, ca a calendar that they can calculate feast days off into the future. You can't really do that because of the moon's ecliptical anomaly, it's called. We can go to Wikipedia and look that up, but it's, you know, at the end of the year, which would be Rosh Hashanah coming up, which is very important because the Hebrew Torah calendar has it at September 6th and 7th. The Creator calendar has it October 7th, 8th. Remember, Feast of Trumpets is two days. And what it was two days because what they would do was... You know, Jerusalem knew it was starting because of what the priests did, uh, counting the Omer. And then, so so Jerusalem would light the fires saying it's starting, but all the surrounding cities couldn't see it. Uh, thank you, Barry Ah, for this teaching. Dr. Barry Ah, what a great teaching. And what they would happen, well, what would happen was the Jerusalem would light it. God gave them two days. So then, then the, the neighboring city would see the fire and then they would light their fire. And then the neighboring city would see that fire and it would just spread out like fires, right? So then every city would would, would know Feast of Trumpets, the Days of Awe, and then de leading up to Day of Atonement is really happening. So God gave us two days to make sure that everyone heard that it's starting. Which is very interesting too because the two days of trumpets is symbolic of the time that we're in. You know, we are lighting each other's fires. I was going to sing a song, but I, I don't know if it's a secular song or not. But, uh, you know, we're, we are lighting, each, you know, we're spreading the gospel and that person is spreading the gospel. We're, we're saying a cool message or a cool thing we found in the Bible and that person is also doing that. We're lighting each other fires, right? So that's Feast of Trumpets. But so Feast of Trumpets is, let's see, this is not, this is. So the, this here talks about the three feasts, which is not, so these are the spring feasts, but we're, we're talking about the fall feasts. So I'm not sure the verse, let's see, it is uh, the first day of the seventh month, which is Tishri, seventh month, holy convocation, which means a holy dress rehearsal. Numbers 21, 9, and Leviticus 23, 23 to 23. Then the Lord spoke to Moses again, saying, in the, in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, uh, depending on what version you're reading. This is New King James. You know, we should really go back. Leviticus, we should go to the Bible Hub. Because, okay, we have to type it in. We have to type it in. Watch, watch, watch. I do this all the time. I should have these up. But I just, I think of things as long as, as we go. Bible Hub works good. Because we can actually change the version. Sorry, Bible Gateway. Bible Gateway is a really good way to do it. I um, also want to show you all how to use the Blue Letter Bible and what that does for us. So this is the ESV version. I like to use the Amplified because it includes the Mesoretic text, the Septuagint, and the Latin Vulgate. In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall observe a day of solemn rest. Why does it say ESV? Hang on. Amplified. Okay, again, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, say to the children of Israel on the first day of the seventh month, almost October, this, see the Amplified kind of helps us understand it differently because we're using the Gregorian. So the seventh month is Tishri. You shall observe a day of solemn sabbatical rest, a memorial day announced by the blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall not do any laborious work on that day, but you shall present an offering by fire to the Lord. 
Let's just go to King James real quick so you could see. Check JK. Ye shall have a Sabbath. Oh, a holy convocation. A holy convocation. A holy dress rehearsal. Blowing of the trumpets. Now, this, this is Rosh Hashanah. This is Rosh Hashanah. He said trumpets. Yom Teruah. A loud shout. This is the day it changes years from 5781 to 5782. Now, there's, there's a lot of circumstantial evidence that Rosh Hashanah is actual, actually Noah's birthday as well. Because only in Genesis is uh, Tishri the first. When, it's, when it says in Genesis, when it gives you all the dates, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth month, whatever, it is different than, because what they did was in Exodus, after Passover, that became a Beeb. N Nisan. We're, we're going to get into that because this this is a beeb. This is what a beeb looks like. A beeb. It's ready. And then they give the first fruit offerings to God. But when it's a beeb, an ear of grain is ready. That's how they would know. But in Genesis, they use Noah's because they say 150 days. Okay, was five months. But in the Hebrew calendar, that wouldn't happen because. They're, they're made of, of 29 and 30 days. So 150 days would have been like 147 days, not 150. So that is proof that they're not using the Hebrew calendar. Which What are they using? The creator calendar? We do have, we could see here, we have a creator calendar. Which is, here's a creator calendar, we're getting to that. But I do want to show something in the book of Jubilees that showed us that this would happen. And that the book of uh, Jubilees does belong in our canon. You're going to love this, right? Check this out. Jubilee 636. Okay. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the season and comes from year to year, 10 days too soon. Look at this. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony. And as an unclean day, a feast day. You see, these feast days need to line up perfectly because they happen in heaven. Holy convocations, holy dress rehearsals happen in heaven, in earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. They happen at the same time. So they need to line up. Why do you think uh, there's verses where God says, you know, he's sick of our feasts. He hates, he... I hate your feasts, he says. They're not our feast. They're his feasts. They are his appointed feasts. We we can see that here. At a place he will choose. Because they're on the wrong days. That's why they're our feasts. So now check this out. Check this out. Did you now you saw in Jubilees, Book of Jubilees, how it will be ten days too soon, right? 10 days too soon. Now check this out. Passover 2020, April 18th. Passover 2021, March 27th. Remember, this year they're adding in the dark too. That's the 12th Hebrew month. They're adding an extra month to kind of catch up to the creator calendar. We just saw in Jubilees that it's abomination. We just talked about how the feast days are on the wrong days. Now check this out. Look at this. Calculate. So, look at this, 353. It's really 354 because of the changes at sunset, right? But it should be 364. Like 365 days in a year, but it's 364 and 360. On the solstices, the sun stands still. That's a whole other topic. But we can clearly see we have 353 days between this date and this date, April 8th and March 27th. April 8th, make sure you can see. This is very important, friends. Brothers and sisters in Christ, March 27th, okay? 2021, 2020. I'm not playing, we're not doing no trickery here. This is just, okay, April 8th, March 27th. Calculate. April 8th, 2020, March 27th, 2021. 353 days, friends. 
Wednesday, look at this, Wednesday, April 8, 2020, between March 27, 2021. You see? Do you see it? And then did you see how we looked in the Book of Jubilees right here? 636, 10 days too soon. Now, so this, this, this actually proves that the Book of Jubilee is prophetic and belongs in our canon. Here's the one thing about the canon, though. It's very important to understand that God's hand was involved in the canon, canonization of it. There's 66 books. The 66 books works perfectly because it makes Psalm 19, Psalms, the 19, the 19th book from 4 to the 19th. And then from the backward to Psalm, it's 48, 1948. There's many things in the Bible like that, how if you go in the dead center and it splits open, it's it's gematria. gematria. Um, you can go to Sandy Armstrong's YouTube channel, uh, his most recent video. Oh, he breaks everything down about that is concerned very well. But you could see here, 10 days. So this proves a lot of things, that Jubilees was prophetic. They knew it would be 10, 10 days. It's specific. Look at this, 10 days, 10 days. We just showed you how... The time between dates is 10 days off. Isn't that mind blowing? So this is why it's so so important that we get Abib. Abib 1. Nisan 1. Let's go to the Hebrew calendar real quick. You can see. So Nisan. So if, if you want a little bit more clarity, you can watch the last video. I go over this. This is kind of an, in addition to that, right? You have Nisan as the first and then you have Tishri as the seventh and you can see the Adar, Adar 1, Adar 2. This is not how God's calendar would work. It's perfect and it does. It does. If you look at the Creator calendar, it all lines up. Okay, so this is it. This is Feast of Trumpets. This is Rosh Hashanah. Speaking to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath, okay? Blowing of the trumpets. This is when it changes years. But the thing is, you have to get the first day right. Abib 1, Nisan 1. If you look up the definition of Abib, Abib means an ear of grain. An ear of grain, right? But it also means that the ear of grain is Abib. It's ready. We didn't finish talking about the Feast of Trumpets and the Seven Days of Atonement. The seven days of atonement. So you would have, we talked about lighting the fires. And then every city would know. God gave us two days. And then we would have the seven days of awe. During those seven days of awe, similar to a seven-year tribulation, the books of life and death are opened up. And the book of those in between. And then those in between who choose Christ will be written in the book of life. And those that he deny him will rise on the last day to be condemned. And then we have the day of atonement. This starts the fall feasts. And it's so important to get these feast days right. We, we, we saw that. There, I, can, I can show you other verses where God says, you know, he hates our feasts. Let's watch. Let's do this real quick. I normally capitalize God, but this is just a Google, Google search. And look, look at their background there. Their little logo. God says, I hate your verse I hate I despise your feasts this is Amos this is also Isaiah 114 I hate your new moons and your appointed feast your new moons your your keyword here your new moon feasts and your appointed festivals I hate with all my being they have become a burden to me I'm weary of bearing them these are not our feasts, friends. These are his appointed feasts. These are his appointed feasts. Why does he say yours? If they're on the wrong days, they're no longer his. They're ours. It says in the Bible that the Antichrist will change the times and the dates to honor himself. Oh, and that happened. It's, it's happened in many ways with the Julian calendar, the Gregorian calendar. We have the Torah and the Hebrew calendar and the Creator calendar. So... I just want to make sure we talked about everything and how it all lines up with the constellations we'll get here. Uh, we talked about the days of awe 
And then what this is cool, I heard it on Barry Oz um, video as well, is a common saying that people would say to each other, Jew, like Hebrews, Jewish people back in the day was, ah, oh, yes, uh, blessings, my friend. May you be found written in the book of life. May you, all, may you be also. Brothers and sisters, may you be found written in the book of life. All this stuff, I just hope helps it helps you with your journey. So we saw that the Passover between the dates are are wrong, and how Jubilee shows that 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 this would happen ten days, ten days too soon. Look at this, they're abominations if they're on the wrong days. So now here is a Creator calendar. You can go to the CreatorCalendar.com, and we can see it's going to put October seventh as Feast of Trumpets. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. First, second. So we got Aviv Nisan. This is one thing we want to explain too, um, which we kind of explained in the last video, but we got to break it down here too. It, it's called Abib. Abib is the first month uh, religious. And then Tishri, which is the seventh month, is the first month civil. But anytime in the Bible, after, besides Genesis, when they say the first month, the second month, they are referring to okay you see they are referring to the Hebrew calendar feast of first fruits Aviv see how do I how do we see this calendar it goes first second third seven four so it goes seven fourteen it's always it's on the new moon so Passover Passover sorry on the full moon some people call the, the first sliver or the full moon a new moon. Some people do it different. And some people start their days at sunrise instead of sunset. But remember in the Bible, the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning were the second day. So now if we go into Tishri, forgive me if I'm saying it wrong. Fifth month. How come it doesn't say the months here? Uh, Elul. So we want to talk about Elul as well and what that means. The king is in the field. The king is in the field. Feast of Trumpets. And they also put Messiah's birthday. So the creator's calendar is putting it at Yom Teruah at September 21st. Feast of Trumpets. October 7th is the date according to so the thing is you have to get Abib 1 Nisan 1 perfect perfect you got to get it perfect and let's see if we can find some of the verses where so this is Nisan the barley ripening in the first month of spring okay once you the thing is they like we were talking about earlier they wanted to create a calendar that they can chart out all the feast dates feast dates into the future we can't do it that way because of the moon's ecliptical, ecliptical anomaly. You have to wait to see what the new moon does. New year, Rosh Hashanah. Uh, and then you would start it. And then what, what you would do is you would, the, the priests would wave the first fruits and then see if they were a beam, if they were ready. And once they were ready, it would happen. But, it, but most importantly, it's the, it's the stars and the constellations. You would have Spica. The original name for the star Spica is Abib. They even changed the name of that. They changed the name of the month to Nisan, from Abib to Nisan, and they changed the name of the star from Abib to Spica. Abib is the brightest star in the constellation of Virgo. And it's right in the barley. It's right in the Abib barley. When that's on the horizon and the new moon and the sun is in the lamb, then you know that's how you're in the first of Abib. And also with the first fruits offering. They would see they would judge it by when the wheat was ready. This is agricultural calendars. They would have to do it year to year differently. But they wanted to chart it out from as long into the future. And they kind of adopted a Babylonian calendar. I probably can't read all this stuff. They adopted a Babylonian calendar. In the book of Genesis, it's possible that it's Noah's birthday is Tishri 1. Because that puts, because if you do that, if you do it that way, that puts the 9th of Av as a day he releases the, as he releases the raven. We talked about that in the last video. In video. 
um, Alul, the king is in the field. Let me just show you this real quick. Alul with the king. So actually we can go back here. The king is in the field. A popular, let me you can read it. A popular rabbinic, rabbinic teaching describes the reality of the Alul encounter as the king is in the field. Now we can discuss what that means, but I just love that saying. The analogy is to a great king who pays a surprise visit to his subjects while they are at work in their fields. For the average man or woman, the king is inaccessible, away in his place, distant or moved. But for the month of Elul, when we should be clothed in sackcloth, meaning just repentance, ash and sackcloth, we are repenting because the king is in the field. We should always be repenting, but this is the king is in the field. So now it's important. You see how important it is to get these dates right? And you see all the Bible, look at this. Let's show you the Bible verse that it says the Antichrist will change the times to honor. Okay, by the way, it's Antichrist is a system. It never uses the word Antichrist once in the book of Revelation. And Jesus says himself, there are many Antichrists. There have been millions and millions of Antichrists. Anyone who comes against Jesus is the Antichrist. We have the dragon, the sea creature, the false prophet. The dragon, see, now, the sea creature, seven heads, ten horns, one fatally wounded head that's miraculously revived. There's a lot of talk about the heads and the horns. No talk about the body. The body. And in the, and in the book of Daniel, the, the creature. Feet like a bear. The body. The body of the beast as well is important. I think that the body of the beast represents the new world order. The new world order and the seven heads being seven kingdoms with ten horn, uh, ten crowns, ten horns, ten crowns, ten kings. So a new world order of seven with seven kingdoms, ten kings. Antichrist will change cal calendar verse. Let's just show you this real quick. Daniel 7.25 And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and he shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and a dividing of time. That's three and a half years. Time is a year, times is two years, and dividing of time is three and a half years. Oh, and he shall think to change the times and the laws. Oh, well, though we... We know they've been changed. There, there are other verses too. We know that he does change them. So you could see how important it is why the, why the Antichrist, why this beast system would change the times. Pope Gregory, who also gave us the Jesuits, gave us the Gregorian calendar. He facilitated that process. And he was the biggest supporter of the Jesuits. And I don't know if you've read the Jesuit oath, but... It's, it's saying that, that they will rip apart their the children of their enemies limb from limb. It's very evil. So you see how it's important to get these dates right? The Book of Jubilees said this would happen. The anti Daniel said that the, the lawless one or the son of perdition, the Antichrist spirit, remember there's many Antichrists, will change the times we'll think to change the times we the times are changed but here's here's the interesting thing too the hebrew calendar you notice how they add an extra month they add an adar to every so in every in a 19 year period every third year they add an extra month but that doesn't equal 19 so that's what you see the adar one and the adar two they got it close to lining up with the creator calendar. Look, they know their calendar's off. They know. It, just like we know Sunday is not the original Sabbath day, and the Catholic Church just said it's our holy convocation. We can just do that. Or it's our holy, her holiness is right that she can just do that. The same way. I'll call you. Okay. I'll call you when I have time to do my thing. Okay. Bye. Love you, bye. Okay. You see? It's so important we get this right. They know they're off. The dates are Elul, the king's in the field. Ten days. Jubilees. It's off. It's off. And we can see, we can see in the Hebrew calendar, they're adding extra months. God's calendar doesn't work that way. 
And everything is in the stars. They even took astrology, infected astronomy with astrology to make us not look at it. Like, oh, you know, a lot of Christians, Catholics, people would say that, no, don't look into astronomy. That's devil stuff. It's not, it, Astrology is, but not astronomy. The sun, moon, and stars. Look in Genesis. It's the sun, moon, and stars. They are for appointed feasts and seasons and signs and years. The, the Revelation 12 sign that happened in September 23rd, 2017. Look, every year on Passover, it plays out the story of Jesus. The, the lamb goes down below the horizon through the grave. And the new moon, sorry, the moon, so it's going to be a full moon because remember Passover. The moon, the first day, comes up through the scorpion. We talk about this a lot in another video. But just real quick, comes up through the scorpion. Remember, it will crush its... Head, our Messiah will crush his head, but it will bruise its heel. If you look at this constellation here, let's see, where is the constellation? If you look here, you see you see the champion holding the serpent? Can we get closer? Okay, you see the champion holding the serpent? Well, look at this. It's crushing its head, but it's going to bruise its heel. This whole thing tells the entire story. So the first day of Passover... The lamb goes below the horizon in the grave, and the moon comes up through the scorpion, meaning it defeated Satan. The second day, the lamb goes below the horizon, and the moon comes up through the scales. Libra. Right here. The price of sin is paid for. It's, it's weighing out our... What's a good way to explain this? You put your sins on here, no matter how heavy your sins are, Jesus, the great equalizer, our good advocate, Comes up through the scales. The price of sin is paid for. And guess what happens on the third day? The ram, the, the, the ram, the lamb goes down in the grave. The moon comes up through the champion. It went down. Jesus went down the second day. Uh, grabbed the keys from the devil and defeated the devil on the third day. And is look, this is the champion holding the serpent. This is what our moon does. Do you see how beautiful that is? It happens every year. It happened before Christ came. They knew this was they knew this was the story of the Messiah from the stars that this would happen. Scorpion like this, counterclockwise, because the way the either the Earth's rotating or the the the, the firmament's moving. We, we don't have to get into that. The whole flat Earth, round Earth. Uh, that's I'm not quite ready to make a video on that yet because I don't know where I stand really. I'm open to both. I'm open to both. But I mean, there are some really strange... All right, we can't get sidetracked. I get sidetracked a lot. That's for a whole other video, the flat earth. I'm open to it. I'm open to it. And some people say, how can you say the earth's flat? You can look outside and see mountains. I'm like... Yes, we know there's topographical changes. We're saying that it's a plane and not a round. You get it. So you see you see how beautiful that is? This plays out in the stars. This is astronomy. Let's not get it twisted with astrology. The entire gospel is written in the stars. From Virgo. Virgo. This is what we were talking about with Virgo and the virgin seed. Let's see. Do I have it open? Start your days in a beep. So, so we got to remember that after Passover, start your days in Abib, Nisan. The Lord said to Moses, this month is to be for your first month, the first month of your year. You see this? So, it's saying that the first of Abib, the first of Nisan, shall be your first month. Not, see, they were using a Babylonian and an agricultural calendar, and they couldn't chart it out in the future. In the book of Genesis, we, if we have time, we'll discuss this, how it's very possible. This is something I came up with. I don't know if I ever heard it, but it's Noah's birthday is Tishri 1. And we can even go into the uh, creator calendar or Hebrew calendar, and we can chart the days my dog's going for a run. Now, we wanted to look at Virgo, right? So let's, let's do this real quick, just so you could see what, what that does. Um, we'll do Revelation 12 sign. We talked about this a lot in the last video, like I say all the time, but this is a little different. This happened in 2017. Bear. 
Let's see. Let's go to images. Because I did want to talk about Virgo when she's holding barley and a palm branch and what that represents, the barley and the palm branch. Oh, and how it all lines up with the with the Blood Moon Tetrads. So check out Sword of God on YouTube, Dr. Barry Ah, Sandy Armstrong. Those three, oh, you will get so much information. Yeah, let me just check my dog here. So are you noticing how how it's so important to get these dates right and how we have been tricked? Revelation 12. Let's pull that up. Let's pull that up. You know what? Let's get into the blue the blue letter Bible. Cuz this is going to I want to show how to use the blue letter Bible. Cuz it's so important because you can get the Strong's concordance and the original words and Blue Letter Bible. Oh, it's incredible. Very easy to use. You're going to be surprised. So just type here. Revelation 12. Oh, it already populated. Look at that. Revelation 12. I had it open. And you could change your version, right? So we'll, we'll go with the King James. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Make sure you can read this. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she was being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. So the red dragon, Satan. So now let's just say you want to go to tools. And there appeared. You you see all the different, you could see how you're getting... Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic, if it has it. Greek, if it has it. And think about this. Greek and Hebrew are the only two languages that are also have numerical values to each letter and word and, and, para, and uh, word. It's like sentence, singular words and all uh, singular letters and then words. You see, but like there appeared would be one word, just like. Uh, we have in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's in beginning, which is like two words, but it's one word. But they have numerical value. So Greek and Hebrew, the two languages the Bible's written in that we have, the Septuagint from the Masoretic text, both use numbers. When God sp spoke creation into existence, numbers came out as well. Oh, our God is incredible. Now, if you want to learn about gematria, that's a very, very deep topic. I'm, I'm not verse, well-versed enough to be able to discuss it. Sandy Armstrong's most recent video breaks it down so well. Great wonder, right? So we can click here. This is the Strong's. You can see all the words it comes from. You can see the numbers it is, uh, the numbers they are. Sign, miracle, wonder, token. There appeared a great sign. Remarkable events soon to happen. Oh, that's great. Remarkable events soon to happen. Look at this. This happened. September 23rd, 2017. This date was actually very important because it was the Feast of Trumpets. She was pregnant, so Jupiter was in her belly for nine months. This is Virgo. And here's the crown of 12, including these wandering stars. They call them. They're planets. This is the crown of 12, clothed with the sun, moon at her feet. Now, Spica, you can see here. This says Spica. It's a bee, but you see how it's in the barley. She's the Virgo, the virgin, the virgin, Mary, who gives birth to Jesus the palm branch of David, the root of David. We can go over this, but the, the gospel is written in, in the stars, and it's so deep because this also represents Israel. It represents Mary giving birth to Jesus, and through Jesus will, re, will unite the entire world. Not just redeem the Jews. Jesus came first to unite the whole world and give them all a chance to come to Christ before he comes back. You see, the, the, the Jews, Hebrews, Judah, the 12 tribes, that's what this represents. This is the 12 tribes of Israel. They are God's chosen people. But when Jesus came, 
we're all God's chosen people now. But remember, if you read Romans 11, this is from the last video. Again, I could say, but uh, Romans 11, 25 through 26, Jesus will come back and save, be the Messiah, the warrior Messiah that they waited on. So Jesus will fulfill this. The deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godlessness away from Jacob. Time of Jacob's trouble. That's the seven years. And remember, we're talking about the days of awe. Feast of trumpets coming up. It's so important. Remember, they have it at six and the seventh. The Hebrew calendar. We got other calendars that put it October 7th, 8th. And we showed you on the creator calendar what the date is. You see how, how this is... The Enochian calendar is the closest, I'm thinking. But the thing is, you can't. Each year, you have to make a new calendar. You have to make a new calendar each year. That is how you have to do it. If you don't, you're going to be off because you have to wait when the first fruits and spikas, abibs on the horizon, the new moons and the lamb. A few other ways. And now that was Flavius Josephus who documented the oral tradition of that, how they knew that was the date. We can go, so we can, so let's read Revelation 12 and show you. Okay. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. She's giving birth. So it also, so it represents Mary giving birth to Jesus and through Jesus saving the world. So through the Jews, through Mary saving the world, through the Jews, right? Because the, tw the 12 tribes of Israel, Jesus from Judah, tribe of Judah, which we can get into here. We can get into here. This is incredible. See, don't let astrology throw you off. The devil did that. Astronomy is what's so important. We can go to Judah. Leo, the lion. Leo, the lion. The rendering lion. So here's all the stars it makes up, which is all the stars that make it up are so important. The gospel is written in here. The little king treading underfoot. The judge. The Lord who comes. The exaltation, the punishing, these are the names of the stars, the punishing, tearing of the lion, the judge who comes who seizes, the enemy put down. Okay, so these are associated constellations, is Hydra, the old serpent, the cup, and the raven. The raven represents the Antichrist spirit. Remember when Noah releases the raven and the raven went to and fro and to and fro for seven? And in the book of Job, when Satan came to God and God said, where hast thou been? Going to and fro on the earth. And the cup. Oh, the cup, the cup of joy. I will not drink from this fruit of the vine until I drink it anew again with you in our Father's kingdom. That old serpent, the raven. These are associated. But the tribe, Judah. Judah, the praise, glory, and majesty of God. Stone, amethyst, he that destroys. All, see, they even screwed up crystals and stones. They stole that. They stole that as well. Everyone's like, oh, we can't get into crystals. We know New Jerusalem is made up of beautiful crystals. Twelve foundation stones representing the twelve disciples. We talked about that in the last video. <laughs> Genesis 49, 9-10. Judah is a lion's cub. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He stopped down. He crouches a lion as a lioness. Who dares rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah. So a scepter shall rise Oh, this is so important when you think about the bronze serpent that 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 Moses held up. All they had, all all Moses had to do was hold up that bronze serpent. They had faith. Once they believed, they were able to accomplish everything. Nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until tribute comes to him, and to him shall be the obedience of his peoples. You will tread on the lion of the adder, the young lion of the serpent. You will trample underfoot. You will trample the serpent underfoot. Oh, we see it in the constellations. I don't. I mean, what more? What more do we need? What more do we need? We could see it in the constellations. See this. This is an older one, but there, there's many. There are many. This. I, I like this one. I like this one here. Uh, and so we we didn't finish talking about Noah and his birthday, possibly being Tishri one, which is the seventh month, the first day of the seventh month. You shall have a holy convocation and not do any ordinary work, but as a day to blow the trumpets. Numbers ten ten in the Aramaic Targums, 
actually says that blowing of the trumpet terrifies the devil. Our jubilee and our joy in praising the Lord terrifies the devil. And also, we're gonna we're gonna. It sounds like those trumpet the trumpets. Uh, all this is just so beautiful, right? So this is this is the this is Judah. This is Judah. You know they even changed cancer. They cancer. It's actually a sheep's fold. This represents God holding and circling. He who binds together, who holds or binds the folds, the resting place. This used to be a different constellation, a sheepfold. Representing the tribe of Ishakar, compensation, reward. Jathinth, Jacinth. This is all just so beautiful. There's it's so deep. But we we got it we got to get our days right. And anyone, if anyone can help with this, please, you know, we'll, we have to just determine the first day each year and then get our feast dates on. But we got Feast of Trumpets coming up. I hope we, I hope we talked about everything we needed to talk about when it comes to Feast of Trumpets. Where is this beautiful picture? Just uh, fields of gold. So if you, if you notice, Virgo is holding barley wheat first fruits and then a palm branch jesus is the root of david the palm branch of david it's all so beautiful and everything connects everything connects the gospel of jesus christ is written in the stars so actually here's a pretty good the picture of Virgo is that of a woman with a shock of wheat in her left hand and a branch in her right hand. The brightest star in the constellation is called Spica. Uh, okay, so in Latin it means a branch, and we uh, we pulled this up in in Hebrew. Oh, we didn't talk about Elul, what it means. So a beeb is an ear of grain. Ear of grain. Let's go to a beeb in Latin. Abib in Latin. What is it? Huh. Abib, what does it say? An ear of corn, ripe or ripened grain. It's very important. That's funny. I had a Freudian slip, a Freudian slip, and I said ear of corn. I didn't even know it was part of it. So we know when it's ready. So we know that we got to start in a bee. We know we got to start it when the first fruits. First fruit offerings represents Jesus Christ as well. Because Jesus was the first to be offered up his body and die and be resurrected. That, that also represents first fruits. Everything in the Old Testament built up to what our Messiah did and accomplished. Completed it. We we're waiting for the full count to come in. We didn't talk about this, right? I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part. See, some people have come to Christ until the full number of Gentiles has come in. So until every Gentile has come in, they will have a hardening. This is the hardening speaking in the parable of the sower. You know, though they see, they do not believe. Though they hear, they do not understand. In the parable of the sower. Talked about this a lot in the last video. But just... Wanted to throw that in there in this one as well. Latin word meaning the branch. There are three smaller constellations. The three, which means divinity for Virgo, are coma, comma, that means desired, represented desired ones like the Messiah, boats, butes, the coming one, centaurus. So if you if you want to do some studying, you can actually go to Flat Water Flat Earth YouTube channel. And, and look for their Gospel in the Stars video. And it's an it's an old um, seminar. It was like, probably like a, you would say TED Talk these days, but it was it was older than that. And uh, he breaks it down. Um, I've noticed a couple things in there that are a little off, in my in my opinion. But we but the Gospel is written in the stars. There's the, it's a hundred percent. We told you the story of Passover. How it plays out, our Messiah, on the third day of Passover, rising through the champion, holding the snake. Rises through that. Ophiochus? Ophiochus. 
Habib. It's so important to get our days right. So here's the Gospel in the Stars. These are the three appointed feasts. Three times a year, all your men must appear before the Lord your God at the place he will choose. At the festival of unleavened bread. That's us. Jesus is a leavened bread. Leavened. That's why. Because leaven was, represents sin. Unleavened bread. Leavened bread. I could have it backwards, but it represents sin, right? Unleavened or leavened bread. Jesus is sinless. We are sinful. Those are the two loaves. Also representing the two commandments. Or the two tablets of the Ten Commandments. The Festival of Weeks and the Festival of Tabernacles. So remember, we do have tabernacles. Like, let's look this up. Let's just see what the Hebrew calendar has it on. Tabernacles 2021. September 20th. Okay? The Hebrew, Sukkot. It's also known as Sukkot. They put it at September 20th. The last day of summer... Is September 22nd the fig generation the summer we're expecting something to happen before the end of summer so it really looks like oh wow 20 Sukkot being I just noticed this I didn't realize that tabernacle you know tabernacles means wife a bride a bride will begin on the 20th and go to the 27th. Seven days. Interesting. It's I know it's always seven days, but it's very interesting. It took seven, you know, everything seven. The raven went to and fro for seven. Many things. It took seven years to build the abomination that caused desolation. I wanted to show you that. You see how important it is to get our dates? If only we could... Look at this. They, why did they make it so confusing with all these calendars? It's the guy, It's written in the stars. We should have an official group that every year still does like they did. Okay, we're going to designate the first day of the year according to God's calendar, the sun, moon, and stars. Right there in Genesis. you got to use all three. They are for the appointed feasts and seasons. We showed you how he says he hates them. He will, he will change the times. Your, your new moon feast and your appointed feast, I hate them with all my being. God speaking to Isaiah. Isaiah this is Isaiah 1. It's right at the beginning. They're not our feasts. They're his appointed feasts. This is prophesying. Jubilee. We showed that Jubilee showed we'd be 10 days off. Look at this. This is incredible. Uh, show your friends. Show your friends this. 354 days, friends. 354 days. Book of Jubilee. It'll be off by 10 days. Jubilee 636. That's the one you want to look for. You could share this video or if you want to make your own and share with your friends. Just We got to get the word. We got to get the gospel out. We got to get as many. One thing I want to point out here is, you know, we're all saying, ah. Oh, we're just tired of this. We take us home already, Jesus. Jesus Christ, come for us. Take us into your sheep's fold. Not cancer. But the thing is, the longer it goes on, the more time we have to bring back those lost sheep. 400 years, the Hebrews were in, the Jews were in the desert, and, four, and 40 years, and 400 years. We can wait a little, couple months here and there. Whether it be September 20th, Sukkot, or Shemini Atzeret, September 28th. That's what uh, Sword of God uh, Ministry on YouTube puts it at. Uh, we got October 7th, Feast of Trumpets. We have September 6th, Feast of Trumpets. All the calendars are just off. The way I'm seeing it is the 9th of Av was August 17th, 18th. Because it starts at sunset, so it encompasses the two days. The 9th of Av, this was discussed a lot in the last video. Kind of proving that that October 7th will be Feast of Trumpets because of the 9th of Av. The 9th of Av, something terrible always happens. World War I started. World War II started. Both temples were destroyed. Jews get get kicked out of England, kicked out of Spain. 9th of Av, Noah releases the raven. 
That was also August 17th of this year. That's when we pulled out of Afghanistan that started this whole thing. And oh, many other things happen. Everything always happens on the 9th of Av. It's so important to get our days right. So I think this year we figured it out. that it, According to the stars, April 12th. April uh, 12th at sunset. April 13th. Okay, because we've got to remember, days change at sunset. The evening and the morning of the first day. The evening and the morning were the second day. The evening and the morning were the third day. If you look at the, if you look at March 14th, which is what the Hebrew calendar puts as the first day. Okay, so watch. The first day of the first month. Sorry, that's, that's the Gregorian. First day of the first month. First of Nisan, 5781. They put it March 14th. They put it March 14th. March 14th, Virgo and Spica, the wheat was way below the horizon. Way below the horizon. We showed you how the dates are not... They're 10 days off. Just like Jubilee said. Um, I want to make sure we're not missing anything here. Hebrew calendar. I do want to go to the Hebrew. Oh, yeah. I want to look at the Torah calendar. Month six. They're putting August 9th. New Year for tithing. Rosh Hashanah. They're putting at August 9th. No, no. Something's wrong here. Hang on. I might be in the wrong year. So Torah calendar is great. Well, it's great, but we never know. Some things are off. So let's go to October 7th. Let's see what that is. October 7th, 2021. What do we do say enter. September 8th. So see the Torah calendar puts Feast of Trumpets Rosh Hashanah, this is when it's civil new, see civil new year. This is when it changes from 5781 to 5782. If you watch the last video, we, we can't get into 5782 without something happening. The fig generation, all of, this generation will not pass lest all these things be fulfilled. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. Discuss that in, in depth in the last video. This one is more about how to kind of understand the calendar a little bit and Abib and how important it is to get our dates right and what it means. Um, I hope we're hope we're getting there. First of Tishri, they're putting it Monday, September 6th. The first day of the seventh month. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You shall have a holy convocation. Feast of Trumpets. Look, Rosh Hashanah. They have it September 7th. Torah calendar. Uh, creator calendar. I haven't really looked into this one, but let's see. What did they put as a first month? They got April 28th. April 28th as... I'm trying to understand this here. First day, April 27th. Second day, why did it say day one? Sabbath. So this will be Shabbat. New moon. It, the first sliver, it's very important to know that the moon is the first sliver of the moon. That's going to be the first day. That's where you start your, that's the first day of the month. And that first sliver happened to be on April 12th, not April 28th. Let's see if we got a moon phase. Let's see if we can get a moon phase. And I can take you over to Stellarium and show you how it all plays out in the stars. What is this? Moon phase. I don't know what that is. See, astrology gets into everything. Astronomy is good. Okay. Moon phase calendar. Now we can also look into uh, every verse that uses the moon head like that shows sun, moon, and stars. All three. They are used for seasons and times and dates and appointed feasts, holy convocations, dress rehearsals. 
Let's see what this does. Time and date. So this is the same website, actually, the time and date, the one that we use for the time between dates here. This is the same website. So this is tonight. Let's see, September 2021. They have September 7th and 8th. I'm just trying to look at this. I'm trying to see if we can find uh, so new moon. If we can go back to April 12th. I can't pick a date here. Let's see, April. Generate. Is this April? That's September. Let's go. Uh, I'm not a winner. I don't want to be. All right. The first sliver is the first day. I know I'm being quiet here. I'm just trying to think on where to go from here. I, we can show you Bible verses that the first sliver is the first day of the moon. Oh, we, we talked about Numbers 10.10 and 10 the Aramaic Targums. The Revelation 12 sign. Observe the month of Aviv and celebrate the Passover of the Lord your God. Because in the month of Aviv, he brought you out of Egypt by night. Duh. Jesus was put to death on the first day of Passover and rose on the third day. That is played out in the stars every year. Uh, eventually we're going to get into Genesis and show how it uses dates differently. Only in the book of Genesis. Only in the book of Genesis it uses Tishri as the first month. The seventh month. Which is Rosh Hashanah. Which is when it changes to, from 5781 to 5782. Which will be 6,000 years. 6,000 years. The Jews didn't count the dates that they were in rebellion. They didn't count those as years. That's why it's 5781 and not 6,000. There's so much interesting stuff in, in, in all this. They Look at this. They changed the star from Abib to Spica. They changed the sheepfold to Cancer. They call Cancer, Cancer. The, 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 the uh, Tropic of Cancer, but then the disease Cancer. This representing this is represents the sheepfold, the God holding and circling, um, holding, sheltering, assembling, th assembled thousands, two resting places, two resting places. Behold, I will I will make a new heaven and a new earth. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 911. 911. Possibly the year that 911 happened, that was our Messiah's birthday. So remember so notice how the Gregorian calendar is not going to be the same every year as far as the Hebrew calendar, the Torah calendar, the Creator calendar, the Sun, Moon, and Stars calendar, um, agricultural calendar, what we should call it. So hope you're all um, having fun in understanding and learning this stuff, um, the Hebrew months. So and this stuff, hopefully this helps you how to look for this stuff yourself, right? So you can go to hebcow.com, hebcow. This is what the the Jews officially use. This is what they officially use. So they're they're putting Sunday, March 14th, as the first of Nisan, the first of Abib, but. Spica, a bee, was below the horizon. They changed the name of the star. They you know what's funny too? It's April. Normally it's in April, April 1st. They call it April Fool's Day. Like, fool's ya, fool's ya. We're gonna, we tricked the calendar. We're fooling ya. They, they, they're, they, they love they, being so evil and putting it in our face. Celebrate the festival of unleavened bread for seven days. Eat bread. Oh, here we go. Eat bread made without yeast. As I commanded you, do this at the point of time in the month of Aviv, for in that month you came out of Egypt. No one is to appear before me empty-handed. 
bread without yeast, without sin. Unleavened bread is Jesus. Leavened bread is us. We're with yeast. We're with sin. Three times a year. Holy Convocation. So we got tabernacles. Remember, we got tabernacles September 20th. I never noticed this, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking September 20th. Got to remember, though, this is on the Hebrew calendar. September, well, September 22nd is the last day of summer because that will be the uh, vernal equinox, the fall equinox, autumnal, autumnal equinox. There's a lot to know. There's a lot to know, but just don't be dissuaded in dissuaded against looking into the sun, moon, and stars because of astrology. Astronomy is God's calendar. He, behold, you know Psalm 191. Psalm. This is what Werner von Braun put on his headstone. You think he was repenting? You tell me. The heavens declare glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. We can look at Psalm 91. Uh, Let's see. King James. Let's go to King James. JK. Uh, and you, I hope you're seeing how to, you know, to use all this stuff. This is helping you, these tools. We still got to talk about the Blue Letter Bible, how to use that. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Look at this. Werner von Braun. Father of NASA, father. I'm going to spell his name wrong, but. Nazi, we took him out. Look at, he came here and he created NASA. He got Psalm 19.1 on his headstone. And you look at the NASA logo. Here's a serpent's tongue. Here's a serpent's tongue. And now NASA in Hebrew, look at this, means to deceive. But it's spelt differently. That's why people, that's that's the trickery. NASA in Hebrew. People say, no, it doesn't mean to deceive. Nasha is to deceive. But the thing is, the way it's spelt, the way it is spelt is N-A-S-A -A, with the umlauts on top. But it's pronounced nasha. But it means to it means to decile, to beguile, to to deceive, to beguile. Look at all these ones, right? Okay, we, we can go to the Strongs, and this will prove it. Strongs will prove it. No one can argue with Strongs. But look at Reddit, all these different things. No, it does not mean to deceive. It does not, people. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's nasha. It's look na sha, right? It's 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 pronounced nasha. It's pronounced Nasha, but it's spelled N-A-S-A. -A. Look at, why don't they want you to know this stuff? Why don't they want you to know this stuff, friends? Why don't they want you to know this stuff? Why they, It does not. Look, it's pronounced Nasha, but look how it's spelled. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. So this actually is a, this is a case for NASA not meaning to deceive, to deceive. And I said no one can argue with the Strongs. So you know I'll admit. So to bring forth to carry up to go, you know to go into space, uh, respect. <laughs> um, it's pronounced Nasha, Nasha. Let's see. That is not the same spelling though. That is not the same spelling. There's there's dots. Where is it? They make this stuff really hard to find. They make this stuff really hard to find. Let's see. Nasa. This is the first time I've seen this on here. I've actually saw it on other um, other dictionaries. See, a lot of times too, I feel like the, the, the adversary is putting a lot of stuff out there that people will latch on to and see and then to try to make us look like fools. And then they're the ones who are saying, hey, did you guys know that NASA means to deceive? 
they're putting out themselves, right? And everyone says it, and then people look into it like, no, it doesn't. It means all this. It means all this. It means all this. They are very good at trickery. They are very good at it. Da -da -da. I'm wondering. So we have. Oh, this is fun. Forty. Everything's forty. Let's see here. Look, it's okay. It, it's okay that, that I'm glad this came up. I'm just seeing if it says anything in here. Nasa. It's Nasa, not Nasha. So it also, accept, advance, arise, suffer. Well, that's pretty bad. Suffer to bear up. Never mind. Suffer to bear up. Burn. They, 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 could, they say, oh, we burn rocket fuel, fuel. Carry away, cast, contain. Contain, that's funny. Are we contained within the firmament? But look at it, look at it. He put us on his headstone. We know we got a firmament. Mary. Magnify. What does this X here mean? Raise up, receive, regard, respect, set, spare, stir up, swear, take away, utterly, wheel, yield. To beguile. All right, let's 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 see if we can uh, maybe debunk this one here. Because it's okay. I don't mind. This is not, this is not, this is not changing uh, anything here, but let's see. To cause one to bear iniquity. To cause one to bear iniquity. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Check this out. Let me show you where I saw this. I don't. It wasn't. Let's see. Was it Strong's? This is see claim, claim, claim. They could have put this out there just for this exact thing to happen. You know, it was really easier. It was a lot easier to find before. Before. It, let's see. Maybe Greek. Greek, that's the Greek word for air. Arabic, Arabic. I know we're going off on a tangent here. NASA in Hebrew Strong's. We looked at this. 609 verses. What does NASA mean in Israel? Bible Hub. Pull out. Trent, lift, carry. We will find it where it says to beguile. There is there is a certain version, there is a certain verse where that word means to beguile in Hebrew. It's used as to to beguile to deceive. In, in I think in one verse. I can't I, I wish I could remember the verse. One day we'll do a video on it. We'll find it. Look at their logo. Look at their logo. Is that not a serpent's tongue? Anyways, here I am just going off on NASA. This, this is not what we're talking about. But it is in interesting how Werner von Braun put Psalm 19.1 on his headstone. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. So I can just go on tangents. We're talking about use the sun, moon, and stars. The heavens declare his glory. And I go off on a tangent with Werner von Braun and Operation Paperclip. Um, but, you know, the heavens declare the glory of God. Every single feast has the stars, sun, moon, and stars play out the story. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. All right, so let's go here. Today in the month of Aviv, you are leaving. Aviv, Aviv, Abib. Change it. They change it to Nissan. And they change the star. We talked about this from Aviv to Spica. It's like, what are they doing here? They're tricked. They're, they're thinking to change the times. Feast of unleavened bread. So this one here actually explains more about the unleavened bread. Passover. Wow. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals. And I will bring judgment on all the goods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign on your... Oh, look at this. This is Jesus. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. 
Jesus was put to death on Passover. His blood paid for our sins. The scales. I will pass over you. His, as long as we're covered with Jesus' blood, we will be passed over. And accepted as first fruit offerings. Jesus was the first fruit. So we'll be, sep we'll be accepted as Abib. As ripe. The harvest is ripe. Um, the king is in the field. And Lul, we got to talk about that. The king is in the field. This is the day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come you shall celebrate as a festival to the Lord. A lasting ordinance. A lasting ordinance. For seven days you are to eat bread made without yeast. Unleavened bread. On the first day, remove the yeast from your houses. For whoever eats anything with yeast in it in front of the first day through the seventh month must be cut off from Israel. That is it. That is saying you're going to be cut off if you if you don't have Jesus. If you don't have Jesus, you're going to be cut off. It's just so beautiful. Celebrate the festival of unleavened bread because it was on this very day that I brought your divisions out of Egypt. Celebrate this day as a lasting ordinance, a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. In the first month, you are to eat bread made without yeast. From the evening of the 14th day until the evening of the 21st day. 7, 14, 21. This is to be for your first month. This is to be for your first month. Oh, I hope everything's still recording. All right. Observe the month of Aviv. First month. Start your days in Aviv. Hebrew calendar. We could see they put the first day of the seventh month as September 7th. So this is going to be... Here, check this out. Year one, right? First day of the seventh month. This uh, will be Noah's birthday in year one. It takes you to 3760. Let's go to calculator. Calculator. I haven't tried this. Oh, this is going to be crazy if this, if this works out. Oh my gosh, I'm going to lose my mind. Calculator. What I say that number was? 3760? 3760 plus 2021. Oh my gosh! It gives us 5781. It gives us 5781. Even though we know that they didn't add the years that they were in disobedience, rebelling against God. 3760 on the Hebrew calendar. Friends, did you just see that? Did you just see that? Let's do this again. The first of Tishri, year one, would have been Monday, September 7th. Oh my gosh! And also Rosh Hashanah is going to be September 7th on the Hebrew calendar. Oh, it's all lining up. It, it's all lining up. God, See, God allowed these, these, these things to change. Just like... He allowed 66 in the in the book in our in our canon in our canonized Bible 66 books. Even though we showed you in videos past that Enoch belongs in there, Enoch was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Enoch, the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered the same year the fig generation started. We showed you in Jubilee how it says they would be 10 days off. We showed you with the time date converter that they are 10 days off. In fact, from feast to feast, from Passover to Passover, 10 days off. Look at this. Look at this, 3760 BCE, 1st Tishri, convert, look at this, I'm, I'm, not playing, I'm, not, I'm not playing games here, we just did the math, 3760 plus 2021 gives you 5781, look at this, what Hebrew year is it? Okay, it's 50, it says 5782. Not yet. It will be 5782 halfway on Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, it changes to 5782. Well, I could show you on the Hebrew calendar. What's today? September 2nd? September 2nd, 2021? 25th of Elul, 5781. 5781. So now if we go to, look at this. September 7th. The first of Tishri, 5782. That's when it changes years, right? The first day of the seventh month. But you start your months in you start your months in Abib. 
Why is this the year that would change his years? Oh, I think we just figured it out. And how does 3760 plus this year, 2021, equal 5781? The fig generation shall not pass, lest all these things be fulfilled. This is mind-blowing, friends. This is absolutely mind-blowing. Okay, so this is a good segue to talk about Elul and the king is in the field. And we want to talk about the king is in the field. So the first of Elul, 5781 was the 9th of August, which is which is kind of funny because the 9th of Av. The 9th of Av would have been August 17th, according to April 12th being the first day of 5781. Sorry, the first of Nisan. You see, the months don't, the year doesn't change until Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets. There's a lot to understand here, but Elul, what does Elul mean? Let's go to, let's see, I got some tabs open here. The king is in the field. Abib, year of corn, a star named Spica. Yeah, this is interesting, right? This this, this right here shows you, Spica, let's see. I guess before we get too carried away into the kings in the field, we might want to finish this, right? The full moon sets behind Spica. So what does it say here? A star named Spica. Did you know that there's a sheaf of barley in the sky and it represents our Messiah? It's found in the constellation Virgo. Oh, the Virgin. And and also this palm branch represents. Do I have that open? The palm branch of God. Oh, this is the first month. We know that. What's this one? Oh, so this is why it wasn't always the new year. This is a story that kind of talks about why it wasn't always a new year. I haven't fully read this yet, but we, we're we pretty sure we know why. I wanted to show that all the verses that says about the root of David. That just blows my mind. Oh, it just blows my mind. That is just so interesting. I'm tripping because I, I think I already did this. Did I make a video on this yet? Either way, 3760 plus 2021 and being the first of... I just love this. I did, I'm just constantly doing this and just studying all this stuff that I don't know. I, don't, I can't remember what I put out or what I'm doing. I like making these long ones now. I went on TikTok. I do short three-minute ones all the time. I, I was looking into the root of David. I want to show you all the verses that talk about the root of David. Oh, this would be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come wherever you live. Why why do we not why do we not celebrate the feast days? His feast days. Since the greatest antiquity, the constellation of Virgo has represented a fertile young lady. In summer, the cradle of civilization, the constellation of Virgo, was known as the seed furrow. Even in ancient Egyptian, it has the virgin seed. Hebrew speakers know the constellation as Betula, meaning young woman. The luminous star to her left side is called Spica, right in the barley. Spica, designated Alpha Virginis, is the brightest star in the constellation of Virgo and is one of the 20 brightest stars in the sky. One of 20. September 20th, Tabernacles, according to the Hebrew calendar, and September 22nd, last day of summer. One of its names in Arabic is Sumbalet, which also means ear of grain. But you see, where's a beep? It doesn't tell us about a beep, not in this article. They get so tricky, but we, we showed you what Abib means. Spica means. Spica means ear of grain. In Latin, Abib means ear of grain in Hebrew. They, they, they try to trick us all, but we're not, we're no, we're not tricked anymore. This, the, the veil's lifted. You know, Romans, what would cause this hardening in part to go away? 
What would cause their veil to be lifted? As we go up, as we get raptured, their veil's lifted. But until the full count of us have come in, us meaning anyone other than Jews, the deliverer will come from Zion. Just as they knew. Oh, and they will mourn for Jesus because they, they knew all along they should, have been, they should have been praising him and worshiping him. But I guess this have to, had to happen to get the whole world to come to Christ. So this basically shows, oh yeah, the shoot from the line of David. Here you can see Genesis 3.15. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of heaven to separate the day from night. And let them be for signs and seasons. I like this article, how you can click on it. The sign of the barley star and the Passover moon. There's a few different uh, articles that discuss this and different ways to do it. But we just know when Spike is on the horizon, the new moon is in the Lamb. The sun, the sun goes down the Lamb. That's the first fruit offerings. We gotta, we have to, we have to pick the date every year. You can't make a calendar that goes into the future. You can't. You gotta do it like God said. Abib. What does it say? What does Paul say? Oh, I didn't see this. Paul says something. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Ah, oh, there we go. I knew it. That's the first fruit offering. Jesus was Jesus Christ was the first fruits offering. It's everything is so symbolic. For as by man came death by a man come also the resurrection of the dead for as in Adam all die so also in Christ shall all be made alive but each in his Ugh. each is in each in his own order Christ the first fruits there we go but each in his own order Christ the first fruits then at his coming those who belong to Christ you can watch the last video. We talk a lot about evidence of a pre-tribulation rapture or mid-trib and a pre-wrath rapture. Um, it's very detailed. This all this stuff is so interesting. Year of grain. It gospel's in the stars, my friends. The gospel is in the stars. The gospel of Jesus Christ is written in the stars. This one's pretty good. It tells a long story about it. You can look it up if you're interested, but I told you a few stories on here. The, the, the Passover story is beautiful. Psalm 19.1, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies, see this as the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Let's see. This is a beautiful one here. Look at the raven. The champion holding the serpent by the tail and the head. Basically by the head. So Revelation 12, does that make sense? Genesis 3, 8. Okay, so why did I have this open? They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden. This was Jesus. Jesus is God. They heard him in the presence of God among the trees. Look at this one. On your belly you shall go and eat dust. You shall eat dust dust all the days of your life what was man formed from what was Adam Adam first man formed from who's formed from the dust you shall eat dust I'll put enmity enmity between you and your woman oh here yeah because yeah here you go and between your seed offspring and her seed he shall fatally bruise your head and you shall only bruise his heel you could see this played out right here look in the stars And yes, we know mankind named these constellations, but they, they did it ages ago. And oral tradition tells us why. Because Bible was an oral tradition. It wasn't written down till Moses. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, Torah. And Job actually occurred earlier, but was written later. Because the, the whole book of Job, there's no talk about the law. With all the trials and tribulations Job was going through, don't you think they would have spoken about the law, Torah, the law? They didn't. And Job. So Job was before, um, obviously it was after Genesis. The Bible is so interesting. It's so deep. We could do a whole study on that. 
I want to talk about the kings in the field. Let's look at Genesis while we're here real quick. The the When we're talking about Noah's birthday being the first. And look at that. Look at the Hebrew calendar, what the dates did and what the calculator did. Where's the Hebrew calendar? I got so many tabs open now. This is the seventh month. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The first day of the seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation. Monday, September 7th, 3760. Oh my goodness. What if September 7th? Plus 2021 is 5781, friends. I want to show you how to use the Blue Letter Bible and I want to talk about Genesis and the dates. I know I'm all over the place. The fall of man. Let's get to Noah. Let's get to Noah. Let's see, Genesis 8. Genesis 8. And God, remember, thought kindly of Noah. Okay. Now, at the end of 150 days, seventeenth day of the seventh month, five months after the rain began, five months, 150 days on the Hebrew calendar is not 150 days. Five months. Because they're 29 and 30 days. It would be like 147 days. This right here is proof that they're not using the Hebrew calendar. But what calendar are they using? Well, many times you will see here that when Noah was 600, watch. Now, in the 601st year of Noah's life, on the first day of the first month, doesn't this look like it's saying it's his birthday? This lines up to being the ninth of Av when you see this. Watch. Genesis 8. 8? Yeah. Then Noah sent out a dove to see if the water level had fallen below the surface of the land. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, the raven, okay? So, at the end of a 40 days. So, right here. Right here. The, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat in Turkey. The waters continued to decrease until the 10th month. On the first day of the 10th month, the tops were seen, right? So on the first day of the 10th month, the tops were seen. 40 days later, the raven is released and the dove is released. 40 days later, first day of the 10th month. Now we'll get back to this 150 days. Well, we, we can sell that real quick. It, five months wouldn't be 150 days. It'd be 147. In the Hebrew calendar. In the 601st year of Noah's life. On the first day of the first month. See? The first month not being Nisan. Not being Nisan. Not being Abib, which is Nisan. Being Tishri. 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 Okay? So now let's do this. Let's go to the first day of the 10th month. Right? Let's go to the first day of the 10th month on the Hebrew calendar. Because you see right here. First day of the 10th month, plus 40 days, Noah releases the raven. Watch this. Where's the Hebrew calendar? So the first day of the 7th month. So now, this will be the first month, according to Genesis. Only in Genesis, this is the first month. Remember it said the first day of the 10th month. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Forty days later brings you to the ninth of Av. Remember, ninth of Av, World War One started, World War Two started, all the both temples were destroyed. Many, many bad things happened on ninth of Av. Noah releases the raven. Seemingly on the ninth of Av. Many people put it this way, but I just noticed this. I just noticed this that I think it's his birthday. Let me know if anyone's have ever heard this before, that Noah's birthday is is only used in Genesis. Noah's birth month, the first day of the seventh month. That's when it changes years. So everything's everything's coinciding with 2021. If you watch the last video, Daniel's 70th week, the 1,335 days. Oh, Jacob's 
trouble. It all adds up to 2021. And now this, this 3760 plus 2021 on this random Hebrew date converter. I hope that we're explaining this right. I hope you're getting it, right? So we're going to, this, this Tishri is where they put Rosh Hashanah, right? The first of Tishri, year 20. Oops. We're going to have to put 5782. It's September 7th again. This is the day it's changing because watch. Go one month earlier. Let's see if this is, how many months are in Alul? Oh, see? See, there you go. Alul only has 29 days. Case closed. Five months would not be 150 days. 30 times five months would be 150 evenly, equally. They weren't using the Hebrew calendar. And then it's very interesting how they kind of adopted a Babylonian calendar. And look, we're, the way we're supposed to do it is every year start a new year. And it's it's to praise and glorify God, and it's fun. It's how we should be doing it. Everything's so rigid and strict, and long, and we're stuck in a beast system where we have to work and uh, not not anything wrong with work. But we, we if you if you don't play along their game, you can't survive. You can't live in this world. Interestingly enough, look at this. The first of Tishri in year one is September 7th. We showed you that it's September 7th coming up again. September 7th, 2021. This is a year. This is the day it switches from 5781 to 5782. Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets, two days. Remember, we're lighting each other's fires, people. Light each other's fires. Show them this. I can't believe it. It's September 7th here and here. <laughs> this plus 2021. I wonder if anyone still noticed this before. It's September 7th in both cases. On Gregorian, you see how even though the calendars are all convoluted, we still, still stuff, stuff still is incredibly, just adds up. Heb Cal does not take, Heb Cal, Heb Cal does not take into account a correction of 10 days that was introduced by Pope Gregory. You see the 10 days? There you go. A correction of 10 days that was introduced by Pope Gregory. Look at this. Look at this. It's all coming so clear. You saw that we said that we showed you that in the in Daniel he will change the times. We showed you in Jubilee. We showed you in Jubilee it'll be 10 days off. This was written ages before. Jubilee 636 will be 10 days off. They literally did it. Oh, this is incredible. Elul, the king is in the field. A popular rab rabbinic teaching describes the reality of the Elul encounter as the king is in the field. The analogy is to a great king who pays a surprise visit to his subject. There's a lot of other meanings why it's the king is in the field. Let's see if we clicked Torah counter. This gets deep. I wanted to show you how to use the blue letter. I'm blown away that September 7th. From year one on the Hebrew calendar is September 7th again in 2021 when it changed to 5782. Uh, I'm I know I'm keeping I'm going all over the place. I just want everyone to kind of catch this. Watch this Bible chronology. We did this in the in the last video. How many times am I gonna say the last video? Bible timeline. So these are gonna give you all the dates. In the beginning was the Word, John one before time. So they just put before 4,000 BC. But once you get, you're gonna to get to a specific dates here, right? Let's go to four, let's see. Let's get a little closer in time here. This is interesting. You can stop anywhere and we can talk for hours on this stuff. David kills Goliath, 1024 BC, First Samuel 17. I wonder what day that was. 
This is Bible Hub slash timeline. Let's see here. Let's see. I wish I should just do this. Four four four. At Xerxes. I know I'm being quiet here. I'm just this is just blows my mind. Completion of the wall. 457 BC. They the Artaxerxes decrees to rebuild the temple. After that decree goes out, there will be 70 weeks. There will be 7 and 62. So let's see what happens in 408. You're going to have to use uh, history books for that. It's not in here. Check this out. The boy Jesus at the temple at 8 AD escapes to Egypt 5 BC. 27 AD, this one has him calling his disciples. This does actually align up. So look, if for Daniel's prophecy, some people will say this is when the ministry starts or that this is when you're supposed to count like this, the 70th week. Some people will say is when it, it was finished is when you start the date. When he was crucified. Either way, either way, it still adds up. Resurrection, third day of Passover. This is on a, probably Friday, April 7th, 30 AD, they have it. But a lot of people have it at 33 AD. But either way, the prophecy of Daniel still fits perfectly both ways. Explain that in the last video. Jesus' betrayal. So this, is, this is just something interesting I wanted to show you. We talked about Genesis, how that just talking about Genesis is so crazy how it led us to see how quite possibly it's using Noah's birthday only in Genesis as the first day of the first month. With this first month here is the seventh month. Tishri. This is when it changes years. Only in only in this book. Genesis seven and eight. After Exodus, Passover, you start your days in Abib, in Nisan. We showed you all those verses. Who, oh, here you go. Who is the root of David? We're talking about the palm branch Virgos carrying. Tons of verses. The scripture teaches that Jesus is a root of David. Let's see. Isaiah 4 2. It's taking a while. Let's just click it. It ain't coming up. Revelation 5 5. Oh, huh, I wonder why it's not working. Let's just do this. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Oh, remember we talked about Judah, the lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus. There you go. There's your proof. The root of David has prevailed to open the scroll and loose its seven seals. Loose its seven seals. Notice how. Only the first seal, the, the second through the seventh are numbered. The first, he opened a seal. Then every subsequent seal would have a number because it's, it's uh, in relationship to the first one that opened. But they're not in order. There's no order. They're, it's just like if you have a set of something. Once you say, okay, okay that's, here's one of them. Then every subsequent one, subsequent one would be two, three, four, five, six, seven. Does that make sense? No. 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 I don't get it. We would go into... Okay, let's go. Revelation 5. Bible Gateway. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll. A scroll. With writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. Yes, there are seven, but watch this. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under earth could open the scroll, even look inside. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll. Then one of the elders says to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Let's look at this real quick. 
Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and elders. Oh, I want to do a whole video on this. The four living creatures and the 24 elders and the 144,000. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes. I had a dream once that the seven eyes were different were seven colors of the rainbow and you got the sevenfold spirit of god you have seven colors in a rainbow coming out of a prism make a beautiful glorious pure light sevenfold spirit of god seven horns seven eyes rainbow which are the seven spirits of god there you go sent out into all the earth seven colors of rainbow he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him right hand meaning righteousness in right standing sheep to the right goats to the left at the right hand of the altar who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. Our prayers are used as incense in heaven. And they sang a new song. They sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. If you read the Psalms and you hear the songs, the Psalms sung in Hebrew, they, it rhymes. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Then let's see. I want to talk about opening the first throne. Revelation 6. Yeah, yeah. That, it's Revelation 6 when the first seal is broken. See, as I watched the lamb open the first of the seven seals. Hang on. Let's go to King James. One of the One of the seals. This translation I like. I'm not saying I like because I, I like it. I want to use it because if you look at the original, we can go to Blue Letter Bible. This is you know what this is a good way to segue into teaching how to use the Blue Letter Bible, and I think we covered everything. We're almost two hours in. All right, and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder and the four beasts saying, "Come and see, come and see," and I saw and behold a white horse. Behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. This is the only one with a crown. This is the only one with a crown. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Carried a bow. What do bows shoot? And if you look up the original translation, we're going to do that in Blue Letter Bible. There we go. Bows shoot arrows. When he opened the second seal. See, the second seal is in correlation to one of the seals. That way, every subsequent seal would be a second, third, fourth. There's no order. But, you know, we showed you in the last video, Revelations, Revelation is not in order because Revelation 8 happens after Revelation 7. Watch. Revelation 8. Let's see. The first trumpet. The first angel sounded. Okay. The first, an the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And a third part of the trees was burned up. All the grass was burned up. A third part of the trees were burned up. Revelation 8 7. Revelation 8 7. But let's go to 7 3. 7 3. Revelation 7. Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees. Hurt not the trees until they have sealed the 144,000 on their foreheads. So in 7, it says, hurt not the seals. And we just saw in 8. Incredible, right? The trees were burnt up in 8. 8-7. Eight, and this is interesting how it's 7 verse 7. All of the numbers all line up always. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's leading us to know. The trees are burnt up in 8. 7 it said don't burn them up. Uh, we were at Revelation 5 I think is what we were doing, right? I wanted to go to Blue Letter Bible. Let's see. Uh, was it or was it Revelation 6? Let's see. Hang on. One of the seals. One of the seals. Okay. So now let's go to Blue Letter Bible. 
There's a Bible timeline. Okay, let's go to Blue Letter Bible. Blue Letter Bible. And let's go to Revelation 5. And let's look, look at the writer. That's actually Re Revelation 6. Sorry. But I wanted to show you another thing here. Book. This is the Sefer. Watch this. Open the book. Open the scroll. Let's see what it says. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book. Biblion. Biblion. Bible. Biblios. This is a whole other video too because Biblios was a is a pagan city named after a pagan god. But it's, it's, it's this is the Holy Bible. And we can see here the word Biblion in the Greek. That's what it, that's what it comes from. Biblion, what does this say? Let's see. Book. A scroll. A scroll. So if we look up what Sefer means, the Sefer, the Sefer. I got all my notes in here uh, in case we're in case we're gone. You know, don't what. You know, Project Blue Beam. Don't take the mark. This kind of stuff. A scroll. A scroll. It's a scroll. A sefer. Let's see if it's C E P H -E sefer. Let's see what comes up. Nothing. That's King James Version. Let's see the Vulgate. Oops. Do they have Hebrew? Hmm. Latin Vulgate. Westminster. The Septuagint. Greek. Huh, where's the Hebrew? What is this? Hebrew names version? There we go. Hebrew names version. Let's see what Sefer. Let's see if this shows up. Interesting. Watch this. Yohakanon. Oh no, sorry. Well, let's just see what this does first, actually. All right, let's type John. Hebrew names version. I just want to see what comes up. John. Yes, I meant John. There are no results for John in Hebrew. We just saw it. His name is Yohakanon. The witness. There came a man. You just see, uh, just you see, oh, 444. Four, four. I gotta click this. A man. Adam, right? Anthropos. Anthropos, masculine noun. From being, man face, human being. The blue letter Bible is so deep, as you can see, I barely even know how to use it. A human being, being whether male or female. 444. Four, four. That's Hebrew names version. All right, let's go back to King's Va King James version and Revelation six because we already did look at it said one of the seals and then every every subsequent one was seventh or six, right? But behold, a white horse. Let's look at this. Behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. Toxon. Okay, remember this word, toxon. Toxin, by the way. A crown. All right, let's look this up first. Phrase. So, occur seven times in the Bible. A bow of steel. So, we're not, we're, we're at the wrong tools here. Let me go back. I had a bow. I have to click here. I think I was clicking on the wrong part. Tools. My bow. Oh, this is a different bow. This is like the rainbow. Okay, I, I show you. Okay, the Greek word is toxon. So let's let's do this. Let's try something here. Toxon, Greek meaning. It's gonna say bow or something. Bow and arrow. 
arrows are dipped. A poison in which arrows are dipped. The white horse is carrying the Greek word for toxon, for arrow. It says arrow in our in our English version, but it's really saying a toxin, a toxin arrow to poison. This is the white horse carrying a crown. Corona meaning? Corona meaning a crown? A crown? The white horse, we know that, you know, like you see doctors, everyone wears like white, but not fine linen. Don't get white confused with fine linen. Isn't this all just adding up? Stefanos, let's see what this does here. A phrase. Why is it not giving me tools? Okay, maybe we have to click here. Tools. Now should I overlay it with pure gold within and without. A crown. See, this is a different type of crown. All right, it's taking us down. Oh, I know why. I gotta click on the top here. Let's go back. But it's cool. Just search. Just searching this is showing us things, right? You saw Toxon, and I saw and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow and a crown, had a, a poison arrow and a corona, had a toxin and a corona. Oh my goodness, friends. Are you seeing what we're, I'm seeing here? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Look, this calculator. Coincidentally. 5781, 3760 plus 2021. Go to the Hebrew calendar. First of Tishri, which is the seventh month. The first day of the seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation and not do any ordinary work, but it is a day to blow the trumpets. Ten days difference. We saw in Jubilee, ten days difference. Feast of Trumpets is coming up. We see how it's September 7th in both cases. September 7th in both cases. Oh my goodness. Rosh Hashanah is changing to 5782. So this would be Mos Noah's birthday. I'm almost convinced now that this is Moses' birthday. Not year one, but the first day of the seventh month. See, now we can take this date and add 600 years or 601 years. Remember in Genesis, we can figure out what year that was. So let's see. What was so we would we would we'd have to figure out when Moses when Noah was born. There's a whole there's a whole um someone who already did all that. It said it laid out all the exact dates of people's births oh so well. And the thing is the the Hebrew names are so important what they mean what they translate to. Like from Adam to Noah the generations. The translations of their names mean man appointed mortal sorrow. God, the son will come teaching and bringing comfort along those lines. We did that in the last video. We did a lot in the last video. Why are you watching this for? No. This September the 7th thing is freaking me out. Goodness. And this is the Hebrew calendar. It's not, it's not the, they, they put March 14th as the first of Nisan, first of Abib. They change. April Fool's. What else we need to look at? I really like this this we were doing in the Blue Letter Bible. This toxon thing. There was there's a word that says that it's uh tox uh pharmakia. Pharmakia, and that is used when he caused all great and small to do and when he opened the second seal. That was red and power was given to him. You know what's something interesting too is there's the five horses. Everyone says the four horsemen of the apocalypse, but look. And I looked and behold, a pale horse. Behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them. Unto them. Uh, this version. There's another version that says it's a horse and a rider. Five horses. And I can do this all day. The sixth seal. Earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair. The stars of heaven fell. Revelation. Yeah. 
get right with Jesus. I know y'all are. If you're watching this, you are. If you made it this far, you are. Um, we talked about a lot in this video. I think we did it. The king is in the field. The king is in the field. There is a there. This is a whole deep topic. We can. There's a bunch of um, verses in the Bible and uh, stories in the Bible that talks about king in the field. This one's pretty important. That's the month of Elul. The king is in the field. We're right here. We're right here, friends. You can watch the last video. <laughs> Let's see. Make sure we got everything. September 20th will be Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, so we talked about this too. Monday, September 20th to the 27th. Okay, and then 28th will be the great eighth day. Shemini Yatzeret. That's what, that's what um, Sword of God Ministry puts a, a, a Escape of the Bride rapture at September 28th. Feast of Trumpets is, would be October 7th. All the calendars have it differently. It's looking like this September 7th date is uh, aligning up to a lot of things here. Where is this here? Oh, the king is in the field, friends. Separating the wheat from the tares, the sheep from the goats. God is doing this. Can't you see it playing out? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Our, for we are, for we are, leavened. We are unleavened bread. We are leavened bread. We are full with yeast. Forgive me, Father. I don't. I don't. I don't understand it. Right. If we are leavened bread or unleavened bread, give us this understanding, Father. Forgive us of our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So unleavened bread doesn't have yeast. Jesus is the unleavened bread. We are the leavened bread. You have the two loaves. You have the two tablets of the Ten Commandments. Unleavened bread, leavened bread. Jesus doesn't have sin. He is the unleavened bread. He is the first fruits. All right. I think we did it. <laughs> That we we can we can go on and on with a whole other video with all kinds of other stuff, but uh, just about two hours in. So, God bless y'all. Love you. Uh, if you want to join the Discord and fellowship, leave a comment. We'll I'll send you an invite, and that's where we do our daily fellowship and uh, talking and stuff. And TikTok. I was probably gonna get off there for a while, but you know what? I, I explained on TikTok why I was doing it, but I think it's good to put short messages out and that we shouldn't let the enemy win this is a, that's a, this is a long topic I just I didn't want to hand over everything over to you know they own your videos on TikTok they own your videos alright God bless you all love you in the comments if you want to join the discord so we can talk and fellowship that's where we do it in the discord server and um, Matthew 17 27 Let's watch this real quick. Fish with thoughts. This is a logo I had made. Um, I'm putting on hats, shirts, coffee mugs. I don't even know if we have time to do this. We got that. We got everything lining up with this year. But this is from Matthew seventeen twenty seven. So it may cause, and so so that we may not cause offense. Cast your lines into the sea. The first. Fish you catch will have a half shekel in it or a four drachma coin in other versions. The first fish you catch to pay your taxes, meaning God will provide, right? Behold, they found the coin. Wow, I'm speaking in behold now. Behold, they found the coin. <laughs> oh, I love it. Behold, they found the coin in the fish's mouth. Imagine their surprise. Matthew 17, 27. So that's why I had this logo made. Um, uh, commissioned. I got hats, shirts, coffee mugs, mouse pads, whatever. The hats I really like. Let me see if I can find a hat. I think I have some unopened ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the Discord, we can talk about 
I'm not here to like try to make money and all this kind of stuff, but I mean, I gotta, you guys gotta pay for shipping and the cost of it. I can't lose money on it. Um, but if you want one, let me know. And also, it's a white hat. I got my nail, um, my thumbnail painted. My daughter. We're making a awesome box fort too. Oh, you should see it. A huge box fort. That's fun. We're still trying to have fun, you know, while the king is in the field and pass, we're passing time. Remember, clothe yourself in sackcloth. Repent. Look up what clothe yourself in sackcloth means. And repent. For the great and dreadful day of the Lord is at hand. Oh, here we go. Make a straight path for the Lord to travel. Every hill laid low. Every valley exalted. Every hill laid low. The crooked ways made straight. And the rough paths made smooth. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Look at the coin in that mouth. Read Matthew 17, 27. If anybody wants uh, something made, a hat or a shirt. The shirts are cool. I love the shirt. It's got that logo on it. Matthew 17, 27. I got a couple of these. Matthew 17, 27. All right. We're, I, I'm going to go on and on and on and on and on. So <laughs> I'm not just going to go on and on and on. I'm going to end it right here. Love y'all. God bless you.